Hey guys, I'm Kristen Tate with Rebel Buzz. Here are some of the most outrageous U.S. stories to hit the media this week. On Monday morning, an ISIS-inspired terrorist suspect named Akiyid Oa attempted to set off a large bomb right in the middle of New York City. Now, in the aftermath of this terrifying event, CNN decided to dedicate airtime to President Trump's television habits and his love of Diet Coke. Yes, really. Shortly after law enforcement confirmed to reporters that a man had a bomb strapped to him when it went off in a New York City subway platform, CNN decided it would be a good idea to air a segment about Trump's Diet Coke consumption. Check it out. A New York Times report gives fascinating insight into President Trump's TV viewing habits. The paper says the president watches at least four hours of television a day and drinks 12 cans of Diet Coke a day. Just when we all thought CNN couldn't get any worse, they surprise all of us and outdo themselves. The decision to air the Diet Coke segment during the aftermath of an attempted terror attack speaks volumes about CNN's agenda. To think that a major news network would neglect to cover such a major event like this would be hilarious if it weren't so troublesome. If Ola's plans had been executed successfully, countless people could have ended up dead. It's entirely possible that some CNN viewers who only tuned into the network for a few minutes that morning were left in the dark about this event. They had no idea what was going on. So here's the bottom line. CNN has become so flagrant in its anti-Trump stance that it can no longer be trusted to prioritize breaking news stories, apparently including terrorist attacks right here in the United States. And now for the latest Hollywood insanity. In the newest episode of Sarah Silverman's Hulu show, the left-wing comedian said she felt scared and shaken when a former boyfriend put up an American flag in his front yard. I had a boyfriend many years ago. Uh, he was my first boyfriend who had his own house. And one day I went outside to see what he was doing and he was uh, hoisting an American flag up the flagpole in his front yard. And I instantly felt very weird. Uh, it didn't make sense, but I felt this feeling of like, um, I felt scared. <laughs> I guess patriotism is just too much for this snowflake to handle. The left has deemed it offensive and even scary to show love for our own country. Silverman said that at first she wasn't sure why she felt so upset by the flag, but then she realized it's because she's Jewish. And seeing patriotism, which includes raising the flag, scares her because it reminds her of Nazis. Put simply, Silverman is equating patriotism to nationalism and nationalism to Nazi fascism. Many Americans are sick of watching wealthy Hollywood types, just like Silverman, portray patriotism as a bad thing. Look, our flag represents the freedoms that we hold so dear and the lives that were lost to protect those very freedoms. Nobody is forcing Silverman to hoist the American flag in her own front yard. But why suggest that patriotic Americans who do choose to do that are similar to Nazis? And finally, some good news. During President Trump's first year in office, illegal immigrant apprehensions at the U.S.-Mexico border have dropped by 24%. A new report from U.S. Customs and Border Protection suggests that Trump's hardline immigration policies and rhetoric are having a real impact. Fiscal year 2017 marked the lowest level of illegal border crossings on record. Now, according to CBP, this reflects the new administration's commitment to enforcing the rule of law, meaning we're just enforcing the rules we already have. Now, during Obama's two terms, illegal immigration continued to plague the southern border. During the summer of 2014, hundreds of thousands of unaccompanied minors entered the U.S. illegally. Many of these minors were then relocated in the, in the continental U.S. and got to remain in the country, even though they didn't follow immigration law. During the 2016 campaign, then-candidate Trump surged in popularity when he made illegal immigration one of his top priorities. He gained even more popularity from his supporters when he suggested putting a big wall along the southern border to curb illegal immigration further. Now, Congress has not yet given money or funding to Trump's wall, but the president continues to promise that it will be built eventually and that Mexico will pay for it. But for now, it seems that President Trump's hardline rhetoric, 
along with the hiring of some more border patrol agents and crossing hotspots, is having a real impact. I'm Kristen Tate, and that's The Buzz. Thanks so much for watching.